Good evening, YouTubers. Uh, this is Vince, and this is my 110 gallon uh, reef tank bill. Uh, this is the fifth day. This is the first update that I'll be making. Um, I actually did get one response from a, from a YouTuber, and uh, he suggested that I move my protein skimmer from the actual uh, end of my uh, sump where the return pump was to the beginning where the water actually re uh, comes into the uh, actual sump. And I, I took his advice. I moved it in the first compartment uh, after researching it a little bit more. Um, thank you for that advice. I appreciate it. Um, secondly, um, I know you see here in the video there are fish in the tank now. And you know, what this guy doing? He said he doesn't, you know, believe in cycling with live fish. Um, I actually did a little bit of research, and I am using Dr. Tim's one and only, um, his bacteria, nitrifying bacteria, and I um, I have four fish in the tank. Uh, that's people might think that's a heavy bio load, but actually, um, he suggests two larger. Um, not that much larger, but, uh, you know, two fish uh, or possibly one fish for this actual uh, 110 gallons. But um, the larger fish in the tank that we kept trying to uh, catch, the guy just couldn't catch them for some reason. So he just caught the four smaller ones and he gave me a discount on it. So uh, that's why you see four small fish in the tank right now. Uh, and you hear my daughter talking. Um, I also added a uh, Corellia circulation and wave uh, pump. This is the 240 uh, flow rate. Uh, I added the smaller one on top of the two 1500s that I had because uh, I was concerned about uh, possible to try this build up at the bottom of the tank in the sand bed. And because the tank is 30 inches tall, then I do have the 1500s aimed at the top of uh, and creating a lot of uh, ripples and, and flow in the water at the top because of uh, I don't, you know the release of gas and different you know oxygen flowing more better into the tank should I say um, I, I was concerned about a slower flow and uh, just circulation at the bottom of the tank so I added um, this 240 um, I added that today actually um, and I kind of moved it. it's about 14 inches down on the wall in the back um, I'll try to get a shot of that here um, there it is there this is the nano one it's a, it's a little guy but I didn't want a larger one putting a lot of flow on the actual reef that will be uh, holding coral so uh, I, I didn't think uh, most corals will like a uh, a wave, uh, not a wave, but uh, a circulation pump right at its uh, backside or front side there. And I didn't want it to blow any uh, frags or anything off the actual rock. So I went with a smaller one to just give me some circulation at the bottom of the tank. And I still have good flow for corals that like to uh, be not uh, that high up on the reef. and away from the actual light, but still some circulation. Um, some of the concerns that I had previously, uh, I previously spoke with someone um, about, you know, trying to bring back my live core, my live rock, I'm sorry. And uh, he actually, we got into a conversation. I did some research, uh, the live rock that they get from Fiji and a couple other places, uh, it's shipped by crate, and um, I don't know if anybody has shipped anything by crate, but if you're military, you know, crate doesn't come overnight. It actually takes about, you know, three or four weeks before you actually get uh, anything that's shipped in crate. And so during that process, the reason I mentioned that a lot of the rock actually dries and they have to cure it once they get into their tank, although it's listed as live rock, it's a... Uh, you know, it's been dried and rehydrated within their um, curing tanks. So I'm surprised that even though the tank's only been up for four or five days now, that some of the purple on the rock that was previously, you know, disappearing is actually starting to come back now. And I'm surprised that uh, the coralline algae, uh, it, it's, it, it's surprisingly, uh, it's very hardy. Um, this is my daughter one there five cents in as well so uh, just to get you a 
couple shots in on the, the actual reef uh, now that I built the aquascaping. Uh, last time the water was really cloudy. It was the first day, only a couple hours after setup. So this is just some of the structure that I set up. A lot of this I did poxy, as you can see in a couple places. And I also uh, used some of the aqua glue. So I uh, give you a real good, I mean, you see a lot of activity going on. Uh, I, I'm so shocked that Dr. Tim's one and only that this ability to actually, you know, do what it does in such a small amount of time is actually awesome. You know, I, I, I can't say enough wonderful things about it. Um, there are a couple places where you'll see some, uh, like build up of glue or something. I gotta get in there and remove that. It's just flowing. I think it's glue if it's you know, not something else. Uh, uh, a lot of my polyps that were still on here, they are beginning to fall off. You can see them actually in the sand bed uh, and they're starting to uh, be eaten away by the bacteria. Um, and some actually, I don't know. It looks like they're, they're trying to come back or something. I'm not sure about that, so, but I'll, I'll see you later. Um, give me a moment. Let me set my daughter down here. Okay. Um, well, back to the tank. Uh, as you see, uh, like I was showing you the optoscape in here, uh, Again, I think I've shown this side, but this is the large chef rock that I uh, previously mentioned. Uh, it's going to be great for a lot of the acros that I'm going to grow on it. Um, and a lot of nooks and crannies for the fish. Uh, you can see it in more detail now. Um, the rock is awesome that I had. I, I actually love the rock. Um, so just to give you an idea, I'm sorry for the black glare. So. There's the actual aquascaping and my reef. Um, and like I said previously, uh, I took the suggestion with the sump. I also finally got my sump light in, so let me light that for you guys so you can actually see. Um, so I moved the protein skimmer. I actually set it, uh, it's a small black acrylic box uh, that I got uh, to actually lift the protein skimmer. Um, and I found a way to actually make that stay up i added a bulkhead there and that's perfect for it um so the live rock uh so this compartment is fairly empty now there's the uh actual pump for the uv that isn't you know working right now because the tank is still cycling and there's the return pump there and there's my handy plumbing work so Corellia Wave Maker. Um, I found ways to do the best that I could with what I had. So, um, thanks for the info, guys. Thanks for the update. You see a lot of the Dr. Tim's products there. Um, any other suggestions? You know, I'm open for others' opinions and what they have to say, and I, I welcome it. So, I'm going to get going because my daughter is really upset with me now so thanks guys and keep the comments keep them coming